<coughs> Good afternoon. Uh, we'll come to the first lecture of our new course about machine learning and it is applications. <coughs> uh, my name is Mohammed El Musrati. I'm professor and head of the digitalization uh, program or unit. Uh, School of Technology and Innovation is at the University of Basel. Uh, in this uh, uh, course, we will um, present um, several kinds of machine learning, the concepts of machine learning, and we will see um, how the uh, data-driven systems work, and also we will uh, like um, see the, the, the main, uh, see the like, main concepts of machine learning, so the course outlines will be uh, introduction to machine learning. That's expected to be the first part. Uh, supervised learning, regression, and artificial neural networks. Probability theory and Bayesian-based machines. Estimation theory and parametric machine learning. Dimension reduction and principle component analysis. Uh, semi and non-parametric algorithms. Kernel machines like support vector machines. And uh, if we have time, we also cover hidden math models and reinforcement machine learning. But at least in this course, we should cover the first seven parts. Um, before we continue, I just, before I came to the lecture, um, I found that on a website is called job site. They mentioned that the highest demanded jobs in, 19, in 2019 was uh, machine learning. So machine learning was the, the, the keyword for the highest demand jobs in technology. And, and also they say, or they claim, that it was the best paid like uh, uh, jobs. So machine learning, why machine learning is so important and why we need them, why now the industry they talk about uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, what are the magic of this? Why now? Why during the just last five, six years we start to have this, this, uh, this topic like going around? This is what we are going to explain today. Just I shared the lecture on the record, recorded. Yes. Is it okay? Yes. Yeah. Uh, now, <clears throat> by the way, after after uh, um, the lecture is, is is recorded, so you can go back and uh, uh, like watch the lecture uh, any time that you want. So this 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 would be uh, good uh, for the study part. Okay. Uh, in part one, just remove this. Somewhere, yeah. Uh, in the in the part one, the, the lectures is divided or the course is divided into parts. Uh, every part can be one or more lecture. So in part one, we will have introduction to the course today, layers of machine learning, concepts of digitalization, information and data, what they mean. What is machine learning? And also, <clears throat> we will see some applications, machine learning uh, compared with artificial intelligence, what they are, uh, uh, what is the interrelation between them, um, reasoning uh, concepts, machine learning techniques, concepts of regression classification, clustering, and reinforcement learning, how machine learning algorithms work, and revising some concepts of optimization and linear algebra. This will be part one. Part one, um, it is difficult to be covered in one lecture, so it might be two or three lectures to cover this part one. Okay, let us start with the course reference. The course reference mainly is based on this book by al Introduction to Machine Learning, third edition, MIT Press 2015. This would be the main uh, course material based on. Um, also, there is an, another useful book, it's a first course in machine learning. Um, I use also my book, it's still under preparation, is Uncertainties Modeling and Simulations. 
So th those are three books that they will uh, need that, uh, like the textbook and the references. Um, I used also some other references and papers as well. But for you, uh, it is uh, uh, the slides will be the main uh, like source of, of uh, text in, 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 uh, for this course. So mainly will be the slides. Um, I prepared for this course about 1,000 slides. Not every slide will be covered in the, in the lectures, but uh, some slides will be skipped, but at least you will have the whole material uh, uh, in the slides. Okay, so course evaluation, how will be the assessment of the course? Uh, actually, we have two kinds of students here. Some those are attending the class and some remotely attendants. For those who attend the class, uh, we will have quizzes, 25% of the course. Attendance will be 50%. So by attending the whole lectures, then we will, you will get 50%. But if you miss any class or any lecture, then you will lose five points. How to evaluate the classes or the attendance? Usually I do this in a line though. So maybe during the whole course, I, I would do it like uh, maybe five, seven times just I start taking the attendance and everyone who was not attending during the time of the clicking so he, he would lose five points. So this is the, the, the way but, but just by attending all lectures at least you would pass the course by attending all lectures. Um, then we have submitting a, a written report including some case study with a software implementation. This will be 25 percent. So those are 100 percent. And then also we have bonus 10 extra points will be given by the instructor of, of this course based on the exercise. We will have also exercise session. So uh, uh, at that session, it is um, the exercises are uh, like uh, uh, up to you if you want to attend them. And then you, you would have 10 extra points based on the instructor uh, uh, how to divide those points. And for those who are remotely attended, so they, they are not here in Vasa, they don't, or they are in Vasa, but they are working or something, so they cannot attend the lectures, then they will need to do homework, 25%. Then there will be theoretical exam, that it will be 40% of the exam, so they need to do, the exam will be algorithmic exam, so it will be mainly mathematics in the exam. And also they need also to make a written report, including case study and software implementation, where they can get 35% from that report. So this is the, for those who are attending remotely. So the course, it, it is possible that to attend or to do it remotely, but uh, uh, I, I do prefer for those who want to get something to attend the course. <coughs> exercises session, actually the exercises has been developed based on the feedback, from the, which is the third time we give this course. And uh, based on the feedback before that some students uh, complained that, that they want to apply uh, those algorithms and we didn't have enough time during the course to show us how to implement and how to write some codes that they can do some kinds of machine learning. For this reason that we decided this year to have exercises session that it is eight hours. It will be given by our senior researcher, Rashid Alabi, he's not here today, but next week he will be here. And uh, uh, he will give the, those sessions. They are those are the timetable of the sessions, exercises sessions, and it will be given in the computer in the computer. Okay. What are the prerequisites of the course? So it would be great if you know fundamentals of linear algebra, concepts of probability and stochastic process, concepts of optimization theory some programming skills in any language, Python, Octaves, Scilab, uh, R, Julia, C++, whatever. But what happens if you are not? Actually, it doesn't mean that you should leave the course. Even if you don't know those things or made a bulk of them, we are going to explain some concepts in this course as well. So uh, the main concepts, like when we talk about probability, I will not just give like Bayesian theorem directly, I will also explain some basic concepts of, of probability theory, for example, of optimization, how to optimize things. Um, 
So many concepts will be also covered, but of course I cannot start from scratch because we cannot teach everything. <laughs> so although that we are going to, to um, present some uh, concepts and some basics, but still if you feel that still you have some like holes in the knowledge, then it is, it is good to fill these gaps by yourself to study yourself and to try to find uh, uh, like where are your weakness in, 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 in which area and then you can study more and of course you can also contact me in my office hour so you can come and we can discuss more about those things that you feel that you need to strengthen yourself. Okay. So those are the three requests that it is recommended. Okay. What are the layers of machine learning? Before we start the layers of machine learning, do you have any questions about the evaluation, about the uh, references or something? Do you have any questions? <coughs> yes, please. Are the quizzes uh, remotely in Moodle or in the classes or? Uh, actually, basically, they should be in the classes, basically, for the quizzes, but also it can be on the model. So we, we, I, I inform you which quiz will be in the class or it can be also in the model like theoretical, for example, yes. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, now, what are machine learning layers? If we divide the machine learning into layers, we can start with <coughs> mathematical foundations and theories, which are actually the basis of machine learning. Then above them, we have machine learning algorithms, which is many algorithms are based on the math coming from the general mathematical foundations. And then we have algorithms comparison and applications because we have many machine learning algorithms. So how to compare between them, how to apply that one for that purpose. So this is the third layer. Then the fourth layer is converting algorithms to efficient codes. Usually we don't solve algorithms by hand. The, the, we can prepare the algorithm by hand, but, but after that we need to to convert it to, to code, because I, as I said, machine learning, um, it is a data-driven system. So it is based on data so that we need to, to have a code that can, can manage with, with large data. And after that, we have a blind data analysis, like package operators. Uh, if you take some courses, online courses, how to use machine learning, maybe you find many like online courses that they show you how to use, for example, TensorFlow or whatever, deep learning algorithms from Python, and it is like receive that, just put this after this, and you just write this code, and then you have your data, and then you have this result. But actually, you don't know how this works, um, what is the limit of this algorithm. Those, we call them like blind data analysis. So you don't know things are, uh, how things are going. For example, I give you Excel file, with like thousands of inputs, and you want to get some result clustering data, you, uh, then you can just blindly apply one of the clustering algorithms, and then you get some result. But uh, uh, is that algorithm is the best to use with this data or not? For, for example, this is, this is not uh, uh, possible to know if you don't know the, those, the other layers. <coughs> So, uh, uh, and for, uh, the final is the output data analysis and results interpretations. Then once you have the data, you have the cluster data, then someone else or maybe some expert, then they can analyze the results. Maybe it can be also, it can also machine, like in artificial intelligence, they can also take a decision based on the machine learning algorithm. Those are the layers. Where are our course? Our course is here in the first circle. This course, ICAT 3120, that mainly we will we, we cover a little bit mathematical foundations, then mainly machine learning algorithms and machine uh, and algorithm comparison and applications and little coding. We have little coding in this, this course. What about more coding? More coding will be given in the another course is called applied machine learning. The applied machine learning course started just last semester and it was given uh, by Professor Petri uh, Valisu, and it was uh, uh, based on generic code. But, but we will have now, uh, next year or this year, actually later, we will have some special code for this, for this course as well. 
So this cost is very important to be taken after 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 uh, 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 I can't get the one twenty. Then if you want to be like expert, so you know the algorithms, and now you want also to be expert in how to implement those algorithms. Then you go to the next course. Okay. If we take this equation from Albert Stein, he said learning is experience, everything else is just information. It's true. Everything around us information. In biology, our cell is, contains information. And um, the Facebook, what it contains, information, what's up, information. How the machine works, it is based on information, thermodynamics, information. So everything is an information. But this information represents different aspects. Information in digitalization, we can, we can represent this information as, as, as symbols or as numbers. Uh, in information theory, uh, uh, that uh, like the invention or the construction actually of the information theory was Clark Shannon in 1948 that he proposed or he, he put the basis of information theory. His concept is very basic, but yet very deep and very important. He said that the information content for any event is, is inversely related to its probability of occurrence. So based on this basic concept, he was able to build very strong theory about information theory, which is, which is the basis of, of telecommunications actually. Okay, now the digitalization process. As I said that everything is information, uh, our ultimate goal is to discover information. Information usually hidden in data. Data is different than information. Data can make, make our information. And uh, based on this data that we are looking for data and what is behind data. And then we, we try to extract information from data. And um, data is represented by symbols or, or, or uh, like uh, numbers. So if we talk about binary system, which is the, the, the main uh, power of, of our computers, it is based on zero and one. Zero and one is easily represented because it represents the, the movement of current or not movement of the current. So it is on off, it is like the switch on off. So that uh, uh, one transistor, for example, he can make a lot of, of, of different kinds of logic operations. And, and based on that, uh, uh, data can be represented like series of zeros and ones. Zero means that cut off, one means like off and on. Okay? So the digitalization means that first, we, our data, which is representing information, is sampled in time, so we have discrete in time, and then it quantizes it in, in amplitude. So we have, we have them like a discrete kind of data in zero and one, which can be easily processed by our electronics. We can store them, we can send them, and, and we can, uh, for example, process them. Okay. What is digitalization? If we look to this general block diagram, we have objects or material or social system, whatever. As I said, everything we are looking for information, and based on this information that we can convert, we can like measure, and the measurement result is data, and based on uh, and the data usually corrupted and it can be noisy also, and and but they carry information and we are looking for the information, so we can have sensors, we can read websites, for example, we can convert whatever that into zeros and one. So at the end of the day, you have zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. But what it represents depends on the context. It can, it can represent, for example, some disease. It can represent your gene. It can represent, for example, the political view for some people in certain country. It can represent anything. It is, it is, it is kind of, of, of data there. So we have data collection and measurement. And then we have data processing. That data fusion, data mining, for example. And then we have information extraction. Actually, our machine learning working here. Our machine learning is working here. 
And then based on the information extraction, when you have more information, then you can build more knowledge. Be building more knowledge, you can have new theories. Based on the new theories, you might look for to, to measure different kinds of data or, or also to, to modify your data processing. So you have the feedback here. And also, the more knowledge that you have, then we can have optimization based on the knowledge and on the data information extraction. Then we can have also decision makers. And we can have uh, actuation, which can affect the environment. And then we have the feedback to collecting more information. So this is the, the, the closed loop feedback about, about digitalization. OK. Uh, I guess that many people ask him, why now? Why during the last uh, like a couple of years, maybe in, in, in last decade, we start to hear a lot about artificial intelligence and machine learning? Are they new concept? The answer is no. As you can see, many algorithms that we will use, most of the algorithms, they are known like maybe more than 50 or 60 years ago or even more. So most of the algorithms they are well known. And the question, why now? Uh, actually, actually, the reason is that uh, during the last 10 to 15 years, um, we have like, like exponentially uh, in, uh, like improvement or increasing in two main things. One, in the electronics, in integrated circuit applications. So we start to have very high and efficient computation devices. This is the, so the computing devices becomes much, much more efficient than before. And the second thing is the telecommunication. Uh, I came to Finland in 1999. At that time, we were using like JSM or also for data. And the maximum data rate that you can obtain at that time is between 9.6 kilobit per second up to 14 kilobit per second. This was in 1999 and in 2000, about 14 kilobits per second, and we were paying their, their time usage. And now we have in the 5G, we can easily support one gigabit per second. This means that 100,000 times faster. So we then, we then, this than 20 years, we can achieve 100,000 times faster than in the data communication. So this is one very, very important part. So now when you have many, many sensors, then you can collect data, you can send them easily from, from place to place and you can make the processing. Um, also during the last 50 years, the number of transistors per millimeter square has been doubled almost every 1.5 years. So uh, actually, if you compare our, the best of our computation devices today with the best of the computation devices 50 years ago, today's computation is 100 million times faster. 100 million times faster. So you can see that this is, those are the main motivation that we can now rebuild our systems based on AI and also based on machine learning. This is from technology point of view. And those are two reasons. There is a third reason about the application, the need for new applications right now. For example, autonomous cars now <coughs> starts to, to work and more intelligent systems that are needed, population increases. And because of that, we need more efficient way to use our resources. We need to use our resources very efficiently. For example, for in, in, in farming, we need much more efficient systems because the population becomes more and more and more. Um, in, in, in medication, in, 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 other, in many other aspects. So we have two technology reasons, technological reasons that the communication and the computation. And also the third reason is the required requirement of the uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the new uh, uh, era that we have a lot of like, new requirements and also new challenges as well. Okay. Information. Actually, information, as I said, this is what we are always looking for. We are looking always for information. And, uh, the information is the currency of life. Information is very important. But uh, 
usually we don't have access for full information. What we have, we have access to data and based on the data we can extract some information. But uh, we don't have uh, complete, 100% accurate information about almost everything or anything. This is what we are going to explain later. So we have, what is the relation between data and information? As I said, that data is a general word. For example, health system, the data, it can be sickness types, patients <laughs> attributes, means that, for example, this blood pressure, uh, weight, uh, like uh, blood, sugar in the blood, and so on. So it is patient attributes. Uh, medicine finds, um, spread of certain virus in some geographical area, and so on. So th these are kinds of data. Uh, in marketing, we might have different kinds of data like, like distribution of goods bought, but, uh, prices, sales rates, uh, with time, date, place, stock market, trends, impact of certain events on markets, and so on. Climate changes as well, we have a lot of data about that. Uh, personal data, it can be like, for example, visiting places, social media, family, education, uh, financial uh, situation, uh, political trends of people, uh, preferred foods and drinks, emails, flow, and so on. So those are data. Um, now we have a lot of data, and this data contains information. Um, nowadays, as I said, because of the, of, uh, of the development of, of electronics, we have, it becomes very really easy to, to, to store data. For example, in uh, flash memory now, you can get flash memory with five to 12 gigabytes of data. It is a very small one, you can carry it in your pocket. Uh, before 50 years, you need a house size to, to carry some information. So data becomes easy to collect data. But what is the challenge? How to get information from data? This is a big challenge. Um, Sometimes we need to use algorithms, but also we need to use our like, imagination, how to find data, uh, how to find information from data, how to extract information. Sometimes actually, uh, which is more challenged, that how to find some information from data that we don't know before. So it, it, it is really challenging in this, in, in this regard. Okay, so data generally consists of biasing of the data, and it can be also with this interference, and it can also noisy and disturbance. So you can see that, that we are looking for this information that which is unknown, completely at least. We might know partially the information, but not complete. So, but this information, it is uh, valid in data, and data, it might contain bias. For example, if you open the Facebook for some guy, and he, might, he may say that uh, he's interested in that thing. So this, you can take it as an information, but of this information can be biased because it, it, it might not be true, okay? So, uh, and uh, if someone bought his age, for example, his like uh, uh, age or, or his preferred uh, food, for example, and you cannot rely 100% because it can be biased. That means that it can be not, not true information. So we have data, but also information is something else. It is, it is, it is written, it, is, it might be hidden in data. So we are always interested in the information part. Okay. Now we talk a little bit about uncertainty. Um, when I search internet about the definition of uncertainty, uh, I found different terms like, like in, in Cambridge uh, 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 dictionary, they say that, for example, a situation in which something is not known or something that is not known for or certain. In Oxford dictionary, they say that uh, something that you cannot be sure about, a situation that causes you to be or feel uncertain. From uh, Wikipedia, they say that uncertainty refers to like it uh, uh, is thematic. Uh, situations involving imperfect or unknown information. Uh, actually, maybe based on those, I can say that uncertainty refers to lack of perfect 100% prediction or estimation. If you cannot be 100% sure 
to predict something, then you have some kind of uncertainty. So this is the uncertainty. And uh, uncertainty is everywhere. For example, in biology, we have uncertainty, physics, in economy, in engineering, in other branches, politics, uh, in sociology, finance, everywhere we have uh, uh, some kind of uncertainty. And actually, uncertainty gives us the logic for our life. For example, I put here this funny example that I know that I will have bad car crash today. Hence, I will stay home. But I must have a crash. So, uh, uh, because of uncertainty, if you are certain hundred percent that tomorrow you will have car crash, then tomorrow you will not. You will stay at home. But you must have car crash. So the, 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 there is a, a, like like paradox here. So uncertainty actually gives meaning for life. So the, uh, the, uh, uncertainty is everywhere. Uncertainty is every. How can we handle uncertainty? Modeling is the human tool to study, understand, and analyze reality. So we are not expert in reality, we are expert in modeling. Uh, modeling process can be uh, inductive or deductive or both, like in computer simulation. So modeling can be deterministic, stochastic, can be parametric or non-parametric, can be based on statistics or descriptive, and so on. So, but every model, it can work under only certain assumptions. There is no perfect model. Let us start with this simple example. If you have this tank, and in this tank you have some flow of some liquid, flow in and flow out of some liquid. And you will have valve here. And I ask you, what will be the height of this liquid after one hour? Uh, in the beginning, for you, this is completely uncertain. So you can guess. You can say, for example, it will be one meter, it will be 0.5 meter, maybe it will be empty. You don't know. So your uncertainty is high in the beginning. But if you know some little math, then you can model this process. You can model this process with mathematics. So when we build this mathematics here, so we got first order differential equation, the near differential equation. It explains exactly what happened here. But both two lines enter the world of, enter the, uh, under the world of exactly. Exactly under your assumptions. So you put assumptions that, 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 that you know the area perfectly. So you know the valve perfectly. You know everything here. So based on that, if you know everything perfectly, then you can say that it is exact. Exact model. Exact model for your assumptions, not for the reality. Why? Because in reality, we, we have some things here that not taken into account in the, in, in the model. For example, the viscosity of the liquid with the, with, or with the wall of the tank. For example, the area of the tank can be temperature, based on the temperature, and the temperature increases or decreases, then the area can be increases and decreases as well. So you cannot be sure 100% about everything here. For example, how to measure the, the, the diameter of this tank, you will use, for example, some measuring device. But this measuring device, it will never ever give you 100% per, percent perfect result. It can give, give you like 99.99 accuracy, but it can never be 100% accuracy. So um, if we go to the reality, this algorithm is, uh, or this equation is an approximation. It is not exact. It is an approximation, works fine. It can predict maybe 99.99% about the, the, about, the, about the height of the liquid after some time, <clears throat> but it will never be 100%, okay? So uh, uh, this is the same for electrical circuit. So in general, the model, it gives you some function of the reality plus some modeling error. We can simplify this equation as the model equal to some biasing alpha times the reality of plus some modeling error. So the model always it has it, 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 it represents the reality but not perfectly. Okay. Uh, we will come later when we will discuss about machine learning. It is it is not good to start using machine learning to, for example, to to estimate or to predict the liquid here. Because in this case, we can model it with math. 
So machine learning, as we will see, we use them when we cannot have like precise or accurate mathematical model. Uh, we can have also statistical modeling, but I will skip this because we will study this in the part three in details. Okay, models is based on math. So mathematics is the language to understand the reality. Mathematics is the language to understand uh, the reality. If you look to these circles, so you can see the math is essential here. So mathematics and the statistics are essential observations, measurements, and data, for example, in the second circle, the third circle, circuit is programming skills. What is our machine learning? Machine learning is the model. So in the machine learning, you will need to have some mathematics, some programming skills, and also you have some data. If you are like, like expert in math, and you are very good in programming, but you don't have data. And machine learning is based on data. So you need data as well, or observations. But what happens if you are very good in programming, so you attended many courses, on online courses, and you know Python very well, and you have a lot of data, but you don't have math. In that case, you will be like here, like a blind trials. So every time, every time that you just try some algorithm, some algorithm, and you try to see the result, and it will be hard for you even to be able to interpret your result. Is it, is it correct or not? Is it good or not? What are the sources of uncertainties? We have mainly three sources of uncertainties. A future, future event. So the future is uncertain. So this is the only certain thing, that the future is uncertain. So the future is always like covered, or covers our like, uh, 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 like uh, information. And lack of full knowledge, maybe something happened already but you don't have full information, so then it is, becomes for us, it is uncertain. But you can reveal this by just looking what is behind. For example, uh, in this bag, how many black uh, like um, balls and red balls, maybe in the beginning you don't know, so it is uncertain for you, you can guess, okay? but if you look to them, then you know. So uh, this is uncertainty because of lack of knowledge. And also the chaos effect, or it is called sometimes the butterfly effect that system can be very very sensitive on the initial conditions for example um, 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 if there is some system working for many many years and this system is cannot be like uh, uh, perfectly estimated because it was based on the initial conditions that we don't have a full knowledge about that so the chaos effect the initial conditions are very important, or the parameters, accuracy is very, very important. Okay, let us stop here for, for a, a break. Let's take a break for 15 minutes, okay? And then we continue. <laughs> Yes, the quality, yes. So the quality that tell me continue to Okay, we we'll come back. Continue. 
So uh, now we will go just about um, explaining some concepts of machine learning and how it works. <coughs> um, machine learning is based on um, building some sense or, or extracting some information from data. So for this reason that sometimes it is called data-driven systems. So it is based on the, a lot of data instead of trying to build some um, mathematical formulation, we start to, to extract these concepts based on the data, available data. Um, for example, if, uh, we know that nowadays our mobile phone can um, have a lot of information about you. Your movement, your location at any time, your WhatsApp, uh, like Facebook, Viber, um, uh, like calling or SMS messages. So uh, a lot of data are available. Also, actually, if you are standing or you are lying down or something, so many, many information can be extracted from your mobile. Uh, if we assume that we want to track 5 million people or persons in certain city for a certain day or for a couple of days, how they are walking and what are their, for example, uh, visiting places during the day, how many hours they are in restaurants, for example, in, in shopping and so on. So such kind of data actually uh, available. Um, of course, uh, some companies, they, they can uh, like, uh, like conceal or they prevent this data to be accessible from others, but, but the data is available in your mobile phone. So if you give the right to use this data, we have a lot, a lot of data, but it is impossible for someone to try to analyze such kind of a huge data. If you have 5 million, 10 million mobile phone data, uh, how they visit the, or, or to build some statistical uh, model, um, uh, this can, cannot be done by human. So we, now we need algorithms to do that. Um, if there is some action happen, and you would like to know what is the response of people about this action, if there's some occasion happen. Then we like to see, for example, in US, we have like, let's say, 100 million like Facebook users. And based on the Facebook, we like to see what is the reaction of people against something happened in, in, in US, for example. Then collecting this data is very important because you can read the data, the data is available. I mean, uh, uh, you can, go to the Facebook and you can see how people react to this. So you, you need to know what is the right keywords to search for and then how to build a model then to say that people who are in the age between this to this, they were, their reaction was positive or was negative or so on. And actually, you know what happened in politics about how to redirect the direction of people based on this based on the uh, looking for the reaction and then what kind of the right, let's say advertisement that you do or right text or right message that you can send. So actually it is very dangerous actually. They can be used, they, you, you can, you can, okay, I shouldn't say control, but you can at least redirect the vision of nation based on this information that machine learning that can do, because you can collect a lot of data and you can, for example, transmit some message and based on the message you can, the response of this message, you can build some algorithm to learn how people react based on what you are saying and then how they direct the, the, the vision of some people, of some nation. So uh, it is a huge, there is a huge now like uh, uh, debate about the, these applications and you know, what happened about the Facebook and this uh, 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 between Trump and, and Russia and about this using usage of Facebook uh, uh, information and so on. So uh, we are still in the beginning actually. There are a lot of things can be done by, uh, by this data driven systems. Uh, I give maybe another example about football. Now if you have like uh, uh, in, in different uh, uh, like uh, group games, people can just wear some some sensors that it gives you or the coach it gives the coach the player location and uh, and speed for example 
uh, about all information in the field during the, t uh, during the match. Okay, so by end of the match, you have a lot of data about every player, where he was during that time, what was his activity, and what was the performance of the whole team and every individual. What kind of information you can get from this? This is data, this is available data. Using machine learning, just an idea came to me, for example, I can correlate between the activity of every player uh, at certain time when he uh, uh, um, uh, when he's close to another like colleague of him in the same team so the coach can see to look to uh, based on the result of machine learning he can see that this player or those players becomes more efficient when they are closer to each other or the reverse those those two players when they are close to each other their performance going down maybe hiddenly they don't like each other but you don't see it, but, but in, 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 in the game you can, by analyzing data and getting information, you can get a lot of information and a lot of new, new sites about, about the data. Um, another application in the, in, in the waste material, for example, uh, on the recycling, so you can have a camera and then you can make machine learning to, to, to be uh, able to recognize between different materials. This is wood, for example, this is metal, this is uh, like plastic and so on. For a human, they can do it easily, but for a machine, we need to learn or to teach the, the machine to be able to do it uh, uh, like efficiently and of course it will be much, much faster. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Um, now, if, if we look to this general view of machine learning, uh, if we would like our machine to, to uh, recognize email, is it a spam or not a spam? Okay, so um, you have email, maybe the general shape of the email is general email, like hello, my friend, so you can you receive such email from anyone, but it might be spam. So is it spam or not? It is something, this is very circle, hidden. But we have the object. So based on the object, we like to see what is the hidden information. Uh, about customer, for example. If, uh, 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 if um, there's a bank and there's a customer wants to take a loan from the bank, is this customer fraud or not, or honest? Because the bank wants to have a decision if to give this, this customer like 1 million euro or not to give him because the customer wants to use this 1 million euro for building some business, for example. Is it, is it honest uh, or uh, uh, customer or not? So it is something <coughs> that it is hidden, we don't know, okay? Um, is a fault, for example, we talk, uh, talk about fault. This machine has, now it is not working. What type of fault that machine has? Uh, if it is a, a small machine, it is easy to fix or it is easy to diagnose. But if you talk about network, like like smart grid, for example, like electrical network, if there is a fault happen, where can we allocate the fault location fast, based on the like uh, symptoms of that of that or attributes of that fault, uh, and in a risk should you have should you check the risk or not? So I mean many things that they are hidden because of lack of information, then how could we make the machine learning able to help us to like, like reveal or to, 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 to have the decision about the hidden uh, item? Uh, let us do this with something easy to understand. For example, the uh, certain uh, disease, for example. If we have uh, a, a patient with certain symptoms, and we like to know what is the disease of that of that uh, patient. So usually we have attributes. What is the attributes? Attributes are the factors comes from that from that uh, um, object. For example, if it is email, then the attributes. For example, the subject. What is the what is the word is the subject? For example, that was the 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 the, the, uh, 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 the sender of that email. The, content, the, the contents of that email, the word, some keywords in that email, it can have the attributes. Uh, for the disease, 
Then we have this patient. This patient has certain kind of like uh, measurements, like blood measurements, blood screening, for example, his weight, gender, uh, for example, uh, age. Um, you, you can think about any things, others. So many information available for this patient. It can be, for example, for a customer, for example, his, uh, his education from where uh, the um, maybe uh, uh, his history, record in, 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 in financial history and so on. So many things can be attributes, okay, coming with this object. Now, and this is the, 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 the key point of machine learning. Now we come to the history. We come to the history, we have many, many different kinds in the database. For example, this bank, which was using, uh, uh, they have like history of 30 or 40 years of people, customers. Some of them, or many of them were honest, but some of them were also like fraud. And in that case, we have this large data base. So we have a lot of database information and attributes. We give this database to the machine learning. Okay, so the machine learning, they try to classify diseases or customers or emails or whatever based on the history, based on the history. And then the machine learning, it will build by itself some rules. Those rules can be like transparent, so you know the rules, or sometimes can be also black box. So you don't know what kind of rules this machine learning has built. But this machine learning now, we have this now a new object comes with it is attribute, then the machine learning tells you, be careful, this customer can be found. On all, this disease should be that kind of like sickness or, or, or so on. Uh, uh, is it always 100% correct? No, it is not necessarily 100% correct. It depends, of course, on the data and on the experience of this machine learning. And once you have the results, then we, we should have the decision maker who take, uh, as, uh, <coughs> it, it will be like consulting the machine learning. So it tells that if it, it is, it is, it is, it is is it lower risk or higher risk or whatever? So it gives information so the decision maker can take a decision based on the machine learning result. Of course, sometimes if the machine learning decided that this email is not like spam, this is correct email. And when you read it, you found that it is spam. What you will say, there is a bottom that it is junk. When you want it junk, so the machine learning will learn something in you. So they know that this kind of, of emails, they are always junk. So the experience of machine learning increases with time. So machine learning or artificial intelligence working for, some, for one year and another one working for three years, they should have the learning capability. So those which works for three years should be more expert than the algorithms works for only one year. If there is a feedback, to learn the machine learning all the time about the result. If the result was correct, then also we inform the machine learning that good, it was correct decision. And then the machine learning also will get more information about the result. So machine learning always can, can learn more and more. Now, what is the relation between machine learning and artificial intelligence? We are always looking, hearing about artificial intelligence and we are also now hear about machine learning, we hear about big data. What is the relation between all these together? Uh, actually, the relation can be, can be formulated in this, in this simple figure. So the, the artificial intelligence is the big umbrella that you can see we have the machine learning part of it, so artificial intelligence. Deep learning is nothing but part of machine learning as well, but special kind of neural networks as we will see in the course modeling, classification, whatever. So all these things are part of the artificial intelligence, part of the machine learning, and machine learning itself is part of artificial intelligence. What is more in artificial intelligence, we have reasoning, optimizing strategies, uh, imposed restrictions, finding solutions, uh, payoffs criteria, for example, game theory, is always part of this artificial intelligence. So, because the machine learning gives you some informa extracted information, it gives to you to, to the upper, upper layer, and then how to take decision is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence takes a decision based on the result of the machine learning. So, machine learning is part of the artificial intelligence. So, artificial intelligence is, is more general uh, view 
for the system. What is big data or big data analysis? Big data is something external. So big data that you have a lot of data, for example, before a couple of years, we or some company, communication company contacted us that they have a lot of data and they want us to share them with us. So to see if the students can get some information from there. Or some also industry here in Vaza, they contacted us like a couple of years ago that we have a lot of like data in storage and we want some student like some summer trainee to come and to take this data and try to get to give us some useful information about this data so uh, uh, data is data so available big data is available and this big data can be built on sensors so if you have online sensors like temperature pressure whatever uh, or your sensors in, in, in your mobile or whatever then we have databases we have a lot of databases in hospitals, for example, social networks like Facebook, Instagram, and whatever. And then all these, we can call them like data. And part of this data is big data. So we have a huge data. Sometimes you have terabytes of data. And this data, if it, it can fit to this artificial intelligence, it depends on what you want. If, if you want just to clustering this data and you want, and you are the end user, maybe the, then you are just using machine learning. For example, if I want to have a system to recognize, like based on the face, it is, who is this guy, based on the face. So now we need only machine learning. So machine learning can recognize faces, okay? But if, if you want to build something based on that, then we go to the artificial uh, so to the artificial intelligence that you want to have something based on the face recognized face. Then you take second uh, second step. So now we need to have decisions or to take decisions. Then we look to the artificial intelligence as the whole. So then we have applications, different applications, and of course we need always to have tuning and setting for the artificial <coughs> intelligence as well as the machine learning. Okay, uh, how was the modeling before? The modeling before like Newton models or, 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 or uh, uh, Einstein, for example, uh, uh, principles like in, in relativity or whatever. So it, is, it, it was based on sometimes about thinking or about looking or observations or looking for some data. So we have a real system, we have data, then the human can look to this data and base it on that, they think and think and think, and then the outcome can be a model. They put assumptions based on this uh, observation, based, uh, they put assumptions, and then based on the assumption, they build a model, and based on the model, they need to validate is this model valid or not, and compare the validation with the original system, and then they can retune the model until we get uh, accurate enough system. But with the machine learning, the system is a little bit different now. Instead of the human to build a model, we have a machine that it can build the model based on data. And then they give modeling, and they give the model, and then the validation. And then we have this feedback until we are happy with the, with the model. Then the human now becomes uh, 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 like uh, for the interpretation part, interpretation part for the result. Uh, for example, if, if we want to recognize between cats and dogs, for example, this is a very, very like standard example in, in, in machine learning that, that the machine can recognize between cats and dogs. Uh, actually, uh, cats and dogs they can be easily like separated or can be easily classified uh, because there are some like uh, 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 some of them they are very different, but also there are some common that it is, it is hard to, to, to classify by machines. But by human, it, it is very easy. But can you give equation, like, like can you build a model that this, the result for this will be cat and the result for, for this will be dog? Yeah, and it works for every case, it is hard to have this. It's very hard to have this. But for machine learning, it is quite easy because in the machine learning, we can give a lot of pictures for cats, and a lot of pictures for, for dogs, and then we recognize them. This is zero, zero means cat, and one means, for example, Dog, and then the machine starts itself by building internally the, 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 the recognition uh, uh, criteria without giving uh, the, the machine certain equations to do it. 
So a few possible applications of machine learning, you can have applications in data mining, banking process, cloud spam detection, stock market analysis and prediction, manufacturing process and optimization, autonomy machines like autonomous cars, uh, medical diagnosis and drug manufacturing like in the smart health, uh, smart systems like smart grids, smart cities and so on, telecommunication networks analysis and optimization, security applications, pattern recognition applications like biometric recognition, optical character recognition, data forwarding, um, moving target classifications and so on, uh, forecasting, uh, robotics and so on. So we have actually many, many applications for the machine learning. Okay, so uh, what are the classes or the kinds of machine learning? We have mainly four different kinds of machine learning. They are unsupervised learning, semi-supervised learning, supervised learning, and reinforcement learning. In, that, in this introductory part, for the part one, we will go through all of them in very, uh, like, like, uh, basic or, or very introductory way, so you know what everyone means. So in, in, in unsupervised learning or semi-supervised learning, both are used for the clustering, clustering data, and we have different algorithms that can be used. And for supervised learning and semi-supervised learning, the, 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 the second way of application is for recognition, and we have different kinds like linear and linear recognition, rolling forks, decision trees, support vector machines, kernel estimation, and so on. Then we have classification of data. Classification is similar to clustering, but classification you need labels. So you need it is used with supervised learning and reinforcement learning. Okay. So as it is explained by the name, unsupervised learning, it means that learning without teacher learning without teacher. So I don't say that this is dog and this is cat. I don't say that. I don't say that th this email is a spam and this email is not. I don't teach. So I, I ask the algorithm by itself to cluster the data. Uh, in that case, if I give the, um, uh, for example, many pictures for dogs and many pictures for cats for, for the clustering in unsupervised learning, I don't teach what is cat and what is dog. And I ask the algorithm to try to classify data. So if it works fine, they will put maybe 99 or 98% of the dogs in one cluster and the others in other cluster. So they're clustering them without knowing what they mean, but they can find some hidden similarities between the clusters. Okay? So the clustering, you don't need to teach. There is no teacher. Yeah, so it is called unsupervised learning. It is like learning by yourself. So you don't need teacher. Semi-supervised learning, that you might have uh, some general uh, information, not to teach one by one, but you have some current, or you have some uh, like distribution of, of the input. This will come later to it. In, in supervised learning, you have a teacher. So this is cat, this is dog, this is mouse. So then the system can, can you give labels. You give labels, so you say this is this is what what, what is this and what is that, and then the, in the learning process it comes based on a teacher, based on a teacher. What is reinforcement learning? In the reinforcement learning, we don't have teacher, but we have like like uh, uh, critic. So you say this is bad, this is good. You don't see what is what is right. So we don't have a teacher, but we have like a bonus which say that when the machine takes some action, you say, good action. This action, bad action. But you don't learn, you don't teach what is the correct one. But you say just what is, what is right, what is wrong. This is right, this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong. So the machine itself tries to build the knowledge based on this information. It is like, for example, if we have a robot without any rules, that we don't teach the robot that this is a wall and it sh shouldn't hit the, the wall. But we teach only that, uh, so the robot starts to move inside this room, and when it, it, it hits the wall, then we, we have an, a, a signal, this is bad action. So the robot will try not to hit the wall again. So this is called the reinforcement 
Okay. We start with the regression. So we will have a few slides about regression before we end this, this first lecture. So uh, what is regression or what regression means? Actually, regression sometimes in numerical analysis is called also curve, curve fitting. Um, Anyone of you have studied uh, numerical analysis before or, or regression techniques? Yeah, so there are quite a few. Uh, programming, how many knows programming? Okay, quite many, I'm happy with that. Okay, good, very good. So, uh, uh, actually, the, the, uh, the regression that you, you have data, okay? We have data that it is measure, based on measurement or observation, and then we try to build like mathematical model to represent this data. So th th this process is called regression. It's called a regression process. Uh, so we have a system. We have input, as you can see, and we have output. The input can be natural or design. What it means means that there is a system already working. So you, you don't interpret the system or, or interrupt the system, the system is working, but you have access to it is input and it is output, or maybe you have the system in your laboratory and then you put certain input and you, then you observe the output. And uh, when you measure the input, actually the, the measured input always will be distorted and noisy, even with the, with the measurement device. When you put some measuring device, the, measure, the measure, measurement device will affect the, the original data. Every measuring device will affect the data. Also, there is, it can be noise, can be distortion, can be also biasing. Sorry. So we have the input, and then we have the measured input, and we have the output of the system, and we have the measured output. Okay. Now uh, we compare. We we try to build a model. It, it is called regression or classification. We will explain the difference between the regression and classification later. And now, if we subtract the output of the model from the output of the, of the system, we have error signal. And we try to adjust the model in order to minimize the error. In order to minimize that, we like to be the output of this model. We like to be as close as possible to the output of the system itself. If we be able to do that, then we can say that this model is representing the system at to some extent. Of course, we cannot say 100%, but to some extent, as I said, because of the noise, because of the distortion, we don't have the real output and the real input, but at least we have very close to the input and very close to the output. Okay, so uh, now if you have this data, you can, you can see that you have available measurement is given by this stars. So the stars are the available measurement for you, okay? And the circle, the red circle, the, they, they are not available data, but they are representing from the same system, but they are not available for you, okay? So what you have only the stars. Now, uh, if you want to build what is the best line or what is the best linear model to represent this data? You can see that the difference between every measurement and the, and the line will be error. Now you want to find the line which minimize this error, <coughs> minimize this error. So then just we assume that we have this blue line. Assume that it is the best line, okay? Now, this line can be used for, for for, for example, uh, um, interpolation. If, if you want to know what would be the output at some point here, which is not available in the data, but you can, you can predict it based on this line. Okay? So it is called interpolation. If, if you are looking for data within your set of, of, of available measurement, we call it, we call them interpolation. If it is outside, the available measurement, we call it extrapolation, extrapolation. But you can also build different type of model. You can build this other model, for example, okay, and so on. And, and uh, the difference between the, uh, the real data and the, uh, uh, 
for example, the uh, not available data, as you can see, this is the real one, and this is the error. So the error is a little bit large. It's, it's large compared with the, the best line. But anyhow, we don't have, or we don't know actually, the, the, the actual uh, model of this data. Okay. So once we built the, the, um, the model, how can we assess, is it good model or not? Because we, what we need to, to, to achieve that we should have generalized model, not memorized model, okay? Those things, of course, will be covered in details in this course, but now we just give very general concepts here. For example, uh, let us have this example that we have the stars here. The stars are the available data, okay? And the discrete red line is the actual model. So this is the actual model, this is the real model. But we like to build some model based on this available measurement. We don't know the exact model, which is given here by the discrete line, okay? If I give you two models, one model is the blue one, you can see the blue one, which is not fitting actually exactly with the measurement. And we give this another model. That model actually, the error at the measurement is zero. You can see and at the star, it crosses the star here and crossing the star here and crossing the star, it crosses the star everywhere, which gives you a zero error. But actually in the same time, even it gives zero error during the regression phase or learning phase, but actually this is bad model. You can see because it, 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 the difference between the model and the real model is very large. Even it gives zero at the at the measurements. What we call this case, we call memorization. The model memorizes the data, but it, 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 it doesn't generalize the data. The error is very large. Even the model, the, the blue model, model two, even it, it, it has some error with the measurement, but it still is much better than the other model, which has zero error. So we should uh, be able to, to differentiate between memorization effect and, and and also the generalization. We call them sometimes overfitting and underfitting as well. So uh, we, we always we try to avoid both. Overfitting, overfitting means that our, our model starts to also to learn noise. We, don't, we, we are not interested to learn noise. We are interested to learn the model, the actual model, okay? Um, what is the classification? The last thing that I give you today. The classification is not regression. Regression means that you have numeric uh, output and you want to model this numeric output, continuous output. But if what if the situation is discrete? For example, dangerous or safe, one or zero, for example. A spam email or not a spam, okay? Faulty device or good device. Cheap car or expensive or fair, okay? Uh, so those classifications actually are, are not numeric, so we, we we need to have a classification, cl classifying the uh, classify the data based on that. So machine learning can also do the same. For example, this is linear classifier. You can see that if you have two situations like that, it is easy to classify them with linear classifier. But sometimes we need to use nonlinear classifier, like in this case. So we have those cases. So this one, we need some linear algorithm to solve it, but we can solve it also with some linear, as we will see in, the, in, in this course later. It can be much more complicated situation like, like this one. Okay, let us stop here at clustering, and tomorrow we continue about this one. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.